Well, hello. It's been a while, but welcome back to another edition of These Haunted Places. This little area in the central, central east region of Missouri is the lost ghost town, well, maybe not lost, ghost town of Val Mines or Valet's Mines, or I don't know. It's a uh, built in uh, 1749, one of the oldest settlements. And there are some remnants here. We're going to explore and look around. The building's under construction. The, the, Val, the Val Mining Company is not responsible for accidents. I say that because I think this was founded by a a French gentleman. Well, it was founded by a French gentleman, and that has nothing to do with um, this, this very Spanish sounding name. But we're just going to explore this ghost town and its haunted history a bit. I was hoping to go to the uh, the history mine museum, history mine, history museum down here, but it's locked up. The curator must be off doing something. So we're going to take a look at some of these old structures that date back from the early days of the area. And look at cool stuff like this grindstone. Built around 1840 and said to have been a... Uh, oh, for a previous owner using the farm, St. Francois County. Around 1870, Salim... Grand Jean, a Swiss immigrant, gold miner, and wagon maker, purchased the farm from his uncle and transformed this cabin into a granary. Donated to the Val's Mines Historical. So this, yeah, ooh. Interesting. Fascinating stuff. If I do get a chance to go in there, I will show you that. But there's a lot going on here. Look at this old carriage, man. This sure is some stuff. This sure is some history. This is what we came here for. I saw something move. And like everything else, like I said, this area has its fair share of ghost stories. Not that I know a whole lot of them. I did a little... I did as much research as I could on this area before coming down here, but everything I found was at least 10 years old, so I really don't know what's going on. I intend to make a fairly significant hike to something that might be really cool and spooky. But let's see if we can check this out. The last I heard this wasn't available, but it looks like there's a road here. So we'll see. There's some folks going up and down this road on a little side-by-side -side that I thought maybe. Here's Sophie McGuire Trail. I mean, really, I got a big hike ahead of me. I probably shouldn't be messing around with this hike. But let's see. I will let you know if and when we find something else interesting to look at here in Val Mines. I'm going to just drive around and take a look at all the spooky history stuff and figure out what we're doing. I'm going to check this out for a second. This is another one of the historical buildings that's around here. I didn't end up going to that cemetery. I've got other plans and I don't want to spend too much time on them. These are, uh, this was built by George and Martha Washington someone. And I know that sounds false because that was the president, but you know, it's actually someone who was named after the president, I guess, and just happened to marry a woman with the same last, the same name as the, uh, President's first lady. I think I heard a deer. There was a little woodshed or something back here. This has like water hookups. Somebody was living here at some point. You know, probably not too long ago. Probably long enough ago that they're long gone now. No, that doesn't even look like a woodshed. That's just like a little. dog house or something huh or a well house it's a well that it looks like yeah this is the kind of spooky stuff we get up to though 
Happy spooky season, everyone. Hope you're having a good one. Well, we might be able to see in this window here. Just notice that was probably just a dilapidated building. Oh, there's an open door. I can probably go in. Should I go in? Probably not. But that's not, has that ever stopped me before? Probably not. Ugh. Yeah, it just smells like an old house. Multiple layers of wallpaper. Would have been a stairs here to the upper level. That's pretty fascinating stuff, man. Yeah, my plan is to walk to a haunted train tunnel. Um, that might be a lot to do. This floor still seems pretty sturdy for what it is. Looking at that foundation outside, I was a little concerned, but this isn't too bad in here. But I'm not going to stick around in here either. Interesting doorstop that someone left. Yeah. I mean, I could park here and walk these woods. I'm going to figure out what I want to do, and we'll get back to you. Okay, so, out here in this remote and desolate area of East Central Missouri, I said it right that time, we are on the hunt for the old Val Mines train tunnel, which carries its own share of ghost stories. People are said to have died in this region. Workers, slaves, residents, railroad workers, just all sorts. There's even vague mention on the website that you can find associated with Val Mines, and that's probably put on by the people who run that museum, about a ghost called Tunnel Bill who I'm assuming is some kind of railroad man who still haunts the area. They do Halloween events out here with a bonfire and scary legends. And they talk about the history of the lead mining in the area. Lead that was used in the War of 1812 to defend what would once be what would eventually become St. Louis from the invasion of the British and the Iroquois alloys, allies. This region is very important to our nation's history, very old. And of course, when things are old, they come with plenty of legends and stories. Beyond this tunnel and its spooky rock walls is an old cemetery where many of these people who worked in this region and lived here are buried. And I'm walking through spider webs. And it's definitely worth checking out. And here we go. Nothing but an old sign. Tunnel Bill Carter's Store. I don't know what that means. There's something over here. I don't think this is the tunnel. I think that's a drainage. I think we keep following the road. Once I find the tunnel, and we're ready to explore, I will share the harrowing experience firsthand with you. Who knows, maybe we'll meet the ghost of Tunnel Bill. We did it. This is it. 
I had to do some stupid stuff to get here. But it is uh, gonna be all worth it. The forest is a lot quieter here. This great ma. So keep your eyes peeled for any ghosts. Here we go. I'm gonna leave my walking stick here and get it after. This has been an adventure and a half to get here, man. Look at this thing. Horseshoe. Came here in 1849. And rest until he gets the last vein of lead in the old mine. I'm just quoting Scooby Doo now. Let's just stop for a second. We didn't meet any ghosts, not yet, but this place definitely feels eerie. I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, oh, there's, you know, I got weird vibrations and this is a haunted place. You definitely have ghosts in here. I'm some kind of medium or whatever. Well, this tunnel, definitely very easy to believe in the supernatural. Here. This is one of those places, and it's one of the places I call haunted places. And not because there's actual, like, you know, spooky ghosts gonna jump out and spook you. Ooh, I'm so scary, you know. But because it carries a deep history, memories, and scars of the past on it all the people that have come and gone through this region in the last three centuries, three and a half centuries, geez, it's been that long. Now this is like 370 years old or so, 75, 375 years old, exactly. Well, the town is. I don't actually know how long that tunnel's been there, but this was a railroad at one point. They said there's supposed to be a cemetery around here, but, like, that's pretty far beyond the tunnel. I guess I haven't gone that far. We'll go a little farther, see if we can find it. This is part of the spooky adventure that you're coming along with me on. If ever there was a time, you know, and, and a person, you know, really, if you wanted to be really rightly, truly spooked, make it your mission to come down here at night was well, an old foundation, part of the old railway system probably, or a light. Yeah, make it your mission to come down here at night, man. And you'd 
really be in it. He'd be in the spooks. That's where they do the Halloween stuff. They come in the evenings. And you gotta walk all the way from, like, town. Which I didn't do. Whether for better or worse, I didn't feel like hiking seven miles. But I'm still hiking a pretty decent distance. Probably through arguably rougher terrain. So I don't know. Well, I think we've gone maybe more than 600 feet. And that's the thing, right? I don't know where this old cemetery is. Maybe I'll check out that other old cemetery. Let me go just a little farther, because these with these uh, tall uh, rock kind of faces on both sides, it's hard to tell. I kind of wish I just persevered earlier, because I was up on that cliff above this, and it does level out if you keep going to where I could have got down here and went back, but then that would have been a lot easier off. Definitely geologically fascinating area too. But I don't know how much more you want to listen to me ramble. So I think I'm going to leave it off there. I'm not ending the video. We're going to go back up and check out more of the town. Uh, that museum will be closed by now. For reals. Um, and if I find anything else interesting before I get back or along the way, I will let you know. So it wasn't much longer and... Somebody has a sense of humor. So I'm, I'm guessing this is the old cemetery. <laughs> I mean, they do Halloween stuff up here. So, you know, all the keep out and no trespassing signs are in the, posted in the woods around here too, but you know. This is very likely a place full of uh, graves, or at the very least, even if there are no markers, there's uh, probably bodies. So this is a cemetery, I believe. Not sure what I'm supposed to be seeing, this just looks like an old creek bed. But, uh, definitely creeps. I found a way back, even. Maybe if I had a guide or somebody to tell me what to do or where to go in here, this would be more useful. Well, here's something. No, it's just a rock. Looks like a marker of some kind. Well, I tell you what, I am uh, thoroughly creeped out and spooked out here in the woods. Yeah. And I don't say that lightly. I'm not someone who really, again, cares or... I'm not a skeptic by any means, or I wouldn't even do a show about paranormal stuff or whatever. But I do. But I'm also, you know, not dumb enough to just blindly believe every ghost story and uh, what legend and tale is face value. There aren't any old grave markers or anything back in here, but I'm guessing this is the remains of the old cemetery, that's for sure. So that was a fun little romp for a moment. I'm going to head back and check out the old ghost town. We'll see you later. grinder back there was original to the general store so was that brass scale 
that's behind the t-shirts. That's the original Cuba General Store. There's some more samples there of what we mine here. Lead, zinc, and barite. Mm. There's a clinical grade of white barite here. You know what that is? Yeah, well, I don't know the clinical grade. The hospital barrier. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. It was also used in gasoline, and it was used in paint at one time. Street light here and a little log cabin in the backyard. That was a slave cabin. Yeah, yeah, it's I said that Martha Washington Brooks. That's where they live. Yeah, wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, just kind of... Life history is really hard to come by. Oh. <laughs> Most of my lifetime, you get bits and pieces of life history and piece it together. Yeah, I was thinking about that when I went back to the, uh, was trying to go back to that cemetery. I was like, that probably was really far back there because they didn't want to have the close to the town, you know. Let them, they try to keep everybody separate and, uh, you know, yeah. away from... The slaves didn't get a tombstone. They got rocks and wooden crosses. Right, right. The cemetery's full, but the only those and tombstones on it that road were for the descendants of the slaves. Well, after a rousing chat with Mr. Steve Fraser, the local historian and proprietor of the uh, Lost Valley Mine History Museum. I was ready to check out one more thing before we call this a day. This has been a fantastic look at a historic little town with all sorts of supernatural history in addition to its regular history. But this building, and especially, is really interesting to me. This, uh, according to Steve, this was one of the earlier buildings here. Look at this little boy. Look at this little boy running up the wall. Look at him go. Oh man, look at you go. Yeah. This is the paymaster house. And this was essentially the bank for the uh, mine. Paymaster office. There you go. Note the nails in the door to thwart robbery. It was built in 1846. And according to Steve, this was robbed twice by notorious outlaw Jesse James, who has a, a long history in Missouri, like it says there, doors all made with nails. And anyone coming to here to hike and check out the area can put their deposit of $10 in this door. It's a lovely area with all kinds of spooky history. History ranging from outlaws to fires to ghosts to all sorts to the, the old mines. A region that's been here for close on 350 years. One of the most interesting and fascinating places in Missouri. So, until the next time, uh, from me to you, thank you for joining me on these haunted places. And we'll see you on down the trail. Okay, so real talk hours for a minute here. I, uh wanted to clarify a few things. I know we already technically ended the episode of this, but I had a lot of enlightening conversation later with uh, with Steve Fraser, as I mentioned, and he provided me with a uh, history book of the Val Valley Mines area that he wrote. Um, it, it, the whole thing, um, a lot of the stuff I was talking about in the video was probably really... Um, wrong just like I said a lot of things that I found out later were untrue and I had got a lot of that information from, from a website um, that I had checked and I don't know I, I would believe that Steve was the guy that made that website or, or maybe he got someone tired someone to do it because he seems like the kind of guy that would do that he was very much into his promotional um, stuff for you know what maybe we just 
Nah, I like the, I like the, um, I'm trying to, I know it's kind of, I was going to have a campfire, but I decided not to light one because it's still like 80 degrees Fahrenheit out here. And, um, I don't feel like having a hot campfire. It's getting on towards fall season. We'll have it soon. This is going to be a little bit of a rambly talky kind of follow up. Anyway, we're going to talk about Valley Mines because that's, that's how it, or Valley's Mines, because that's how it's actually pronounced. It's not Vals or Vales or as the Google Maps likes to say Valles or whatever, Vejas. It's Valley. That was his name. Uh, Francis Valley was a French fur trader who settled in St. Genevieve, Missouri in 1749 and then he made this settlement here which was a huge lead mining area and there was over a hundred shaft mines um, and small little boom towns for like the uh, tunnel town that the big tunnel that we went to was um, named after and the front of the tunnel bill is actually the name of the tunnel not the name of um, a person I think when they talk about the ghost tunnel bill it's not like the ghost is Tunnel Bill. There's just potentially ghosts in that tunnel from all the workers and you know uh, slaves. To be frankly, say that word. I don't know. I've been trying to avoid saying that word, but it's it's what they were, I guess. Um, and just people who lived in the area who died. And there was a lot of cool stuff in that museum. I tried to highlight some of the stuff my little uh, video there. I didn't want to talk over too much. Uh, Steve did some talk, and that's his voice you hear in the background, obviously. I'm probably going to have some notations in the uh, video of this, some of this stuff, too, but um, yeah, it was uh, real interesting, but there was some, yeah, like stuff about people going missing or uh, murders that occurred up here, you know, just, just stuff that was crazy, and you think about just about any little town probably has those kind of secrets, but just an old you know, a ghost town, a uh, ghost mining town area that is uh, fascinating. We didn't encounter any ghosts today, at least not that I noticed. But it, like I said, the whole area did have this kind of supernatural quality to it. I do believe in that. I did a lot of off-trail hiking today to go through the um, areas. Um, anyway, I want to talk a little bit more that um, I, that I mentioned the George and Martha Washington. Uh, uh, cabin, and that wasn't the house that we, I thought it was. I saw some picture online that said that was the house, but it's that little cabin that we first looked at, and that's, you know, Steve mentions that also in the video, kind of correcting me. I would love to sit down with him. I might, I might even do something like that someday, just, uh, see if he'd do an interview. He was a, a real interesting gentleman, had a lot to say, um, but uh, anyway, yeah, that, that other house was his uh, family's house. He actually lived there for a number of years. He's the superintendent of the, uh, the, of the, uh, the park and the museum. But the area is still owned by the Valley Mining Company, which is the oldest corporation mining uh, in America, apparently. I did not know this. So there's still a board of directors of Valley Mines, and they own all the land and stuff out there. And... Uh, Unfortunately, um, Steve used to do a ghost roundup thing every uh, October. I can't imagine he does it anymore, but uh, you know some of the other folks that uh, work with him, I'm sure they've got lo local people. But he said that the uh, Valley Mine Company didn't want uh, that image, didn't want that kind of history coming, you know, not coming out, but like uh, that to be what they people think of when they think of the area. So they uh, stopped stopped allowing him to do it and also it was like a safety thing I guess too which which makes sense people probably run around in the dark looking for the tunnel or looking for whatever else out there cemetery several cemeteries and ghosts in the woods and you're gonna trip and fall and hurt you you'd fool self right that's uh so there was a lot of interesting stuff stuff I said that was wrong in his book uh the the paymaster house he told me that it had been robbed by Jesse James but it's a rumor it's been robbed there were a lot of outlaws in the area and Jesse James was certainly one of them, a most famous one. And they did have to, the safe had been removed from that building a few times, and they had to put the nails in the door to keep people from shooting into it. Because it was where all the money was. It was where they paid people, um, people would come and stake their claim there. The company, you know, because the company had the store up the hill there, and they would 
go to settle up their accounts at the store at that place. Just a lot of cool history. There was a lot of other buildings to look at, and a lot of it had been, a lot of the large portion of the town apparently had been burned down in the 70s by arsonists. Which is really a shame, but I guess that happens when you have old ghost towns or old buildings that have been sitting for a long time. It's a prime target for that kind of thing. But, I mean, that adds to the mystique and the, everything of the region, too. So, yeah, this is just my little summary wrap-up. There there's a lot of interesting history about the valley mines and lead. Like I said, lead that was used in the French and Indian War. Lead that helped defend parts of the country. The pure lead that was right on the surface that they could mine with pickaxes, man. That's just crazy to think. And I saw, you know, we had some pictures of some of that in the uh, museum there that you get to see in that, that video. That, that's probably the most interesting part, that in the tunnel. And I hope that you take something away from this. Um, if you live in Missouri, eastern Missouri especially, and this is uh, you know, it's like an hour drive from St. Louis. It's, uh, it's easy to get here. It's, there's plenty of signs, marked roads. Um, Steve would love to see you at that museum. Come in, have a chat, sign the guest book. Check out the area. Check out this uh, cool piece of history and spooky history. And uh, we'll see you later in the month for more spooky findings. Take care now.